There are nine steps I take before every race day to make sure I get the absolute best out of myself on race day every single time. And they're so simple, so I want to give them to you so you can do the same. Genuinely excited about today's video. It's 7 a.m. and it's a twofer. So what we're going to do is we're going on our long run on Koh Panyang around the island. And we're also going to talk you through those nine steps that I take to make sure every race day is as successful as possible. It's going to be a hot one, but it's going to be a good one. That's where we're staying. Oh, and we've got a special guest coming for the run with us that you might know from previous videos. We haven't seen him for so long, so it's quite exciting as well. Look at that. Here he is. I told you there was a guest star. Simon is with us for the run. <laughs> okay, this is going to be apparently a brutal first kilometer. Okay, the first three tips I'm going to give you are actually for you before race day, but I guarantee they're going to help you on race day. So it's things that you need to do. And the first one is the similar to what we've done here today, and that is you need to plan everything about your route about getting to the start line about how you're going to do it what mode of transport are you going to use if you're staying in a hotel let's say you're racing like we did in Seville we raced in Seville and we stayed in a hotel the day before we actually walked the walk to the start line just so that we knew exactly where it was how long it was going to take us all of those things because if you can control the controllables the things that might be playing on your mind on race morning then you're giving yourself a chance to just think about the running, not worry about anything else. And point number two, closely on the heels of point number one, by the way, and I don't know why I decided to do this while we're running up a hill, sorry, Mayor, is planning again but instead of planning your route to the start line and all of those details plan your race if by the way you have a performance in mind if you're just turning up to see what happens or have a lovely day no need don't worry about it but if you've got in any way a type of aim time wise or speed wise then you need a plan because especially in marathon and half marathon you can't get away with overdoing it early and blowing up or you can but it just, it's really horrible let me give you an example from my own life when i ran the london marathon for the first time i knew i wanted to run sub three i knew that was 4:15 per kilometer and i thought this is how i do it i run at between 4:10 to 4:15. i continually check my heart rate i know where my heart rate needs to be so if that's above where it needs to be for that pace i need to drop back the pace so I kind of had an A plan, B plan, and C plan was just finish. But I ran with the plan. I knew what I needed to do. That should give you an indicator of what's to come. The last thing that you need to do before race day is prehydrate. So we have an idea that the, the more hydrated your body is when you get on the start line in theory you only need to top it up as you're running rather than have to hydrate so if you drink little and often throughout the whole day the day before and the morning as soon as you wake up keep going we're not talking about big drinks all of the time but little and often throughout the day your body should be in full hydrated mode by the time it comes to the race and that's got to be key for a marathon even in cold weather the more hydrated you are the better you're going to go and the less likely you are going to have to stop and rehydrate and take big lots of water on during the race it's race day now and step four is that you need to start thinking about the fuel that you're going to put in the tank in terms of your breakfast and my advice would be make sure that it's enough to satisfy your hunger and usually carbs would be good we go with oats yogurt and banana usually also make sure it's a good couple of hours in advance so that it's not sitting heavy in your stomach come race time and finally don't do anything or eat anything new on race day the stomach can be sensitive especially in high adrenaline situations like race days so nothing new on race day should be a motto particularly when it comes to food 
races can actually be lost based on how you dress on the day and I mean if you're in a cold weather marathon if you're in the, the London Marathon in Easter at April and, and it could be really hot could be really cold you have to get to the point where you're on the start line still being warm so yeah. what do we tend yeah. to do Mayor? Yeah. we just had to run and look at some Mai Tai boxing but what we were saying was that on the start line often I'll wear a hoodie I'll wear some tracksuit bottoms that I'm willing to throw away. Most major marathons anyway have this clothes collection thing where they give it to charity so don't be afraid of leaving stuff on the start line but sometimes I've worn a bin bag under my vest just to keep the uh, just to keep the cold off and that was in Seville but whatever you do your aim is to start the race feeling warm and not cold or underprepared. That's got to be the goal. Step six is very common sense, but very worth saying, and that is to arrive in plenty of time. Rather be early and prepared than late and stressed. And if you've done step one thoroughly, which is plan getting to the venue, then you really have no excuse. A flustered mind leads to a flustered race. Of course, there's a fine line between being early and just standing around, but if the day is also about soaking in the occasion, then a little bit early will always be preferable to the reverse. I usually aim for about an hour before the start, but it varies depending on race size or start time. Yeah, yeah. So while we're stopping, I mean, we must be a couple of kilometers away from home. But then once you've done dressing appropriately and all of that, I think it's time to do your warm up and it's something we probably neglect quite a lot, right? Yeah, we do our best, but when you're excited about the race, it can get lost. Yeah, so... But it can make all the difference. It really can. That's the message here is a warm-up can really make a difference. And we're talking like a few seconds per kilometre, especially at the start if you do a warm-up. So obviously a pulse raiser, some dynamic stretches, some drills, depending on the distance that you're doing. But I would recommend doing a warm-up as a priority when you're at a race. Don't let the occasion get the better of you. Really focus on that aspect. Yeah, and just getting the range of motion that you're going to use really utilize so your body's ready to go hard and do well and don't be fooled if you're in a hot country i always say to the kids that i teach warm up and they're like it is warm already there's a very there's a very big difference between being warm and having your muscles warm and ready to go so don't neglect that fact and the penultimate point is just remove any external factors that could worry you during the race like for me it's organizing a meet point at the end of the race with mary or my family or my friends it's not organizing places where I might see people in the race. Don't have expectations of that because actually I found it more detrimental than positive because if that person didn't manage to get there for whatever reason, you spend the next few kilometers wondering what happened and that you didn't see them, did you miss them? And it really messes with your race plan. So my advice is organize all of that stuff before you start the race and don't expect to see anybody during the race. Just focus on the race. Was that about a half marathon just under? Yeah, under 20.36. Yeah, we'll take it though because that was quite hilly and we've been out for two hours, so breakfast time, right? Yeah. Just done 21k in what feels like a cross between a sauna, a cauldron, and a melting pot. But yeah, it's been fantastic and thanks for the run, guys. It's been fantastic. Thank really you. enjoyed it. Thanks, buddy. Oh, that was probably one of the most earned breakfasts we've had for a long time. And the last point I'm gonna make, which might be the most important of all of the points, I think, in terms of how I've seen marathons go for people, is when you're standing on that start line, it's absolutely time to remove emotion. I always think of it like become a robot. I have my plan, I'm now gonna execute the plan. Emotion is not gonna get the better of me on the day because so many things are gonna happen. You're gonna feel great. You're gonna wanna run faster than probably you've trained for. All of the emotions of the crowd, all the other people around you, it's inspiring. And if you let it get to you that bit, it can blow up a race before it's really even started. So I think you can call it robot, you can call it going into lizard mode, whatever you want to call it. Lizard, lizard brain, I always think. It's just like the... Yeah, no? Or maybe that's just my head. But it's one where you just have to go into a mode where you're going to execute a plan. It's absolutely fine to appreciate the emotion and the beauty while you're out there, out on the course. Yeah, but you've got to get in the zone. Yeah, don't let it get the better of you. That's, you know, lots of races get blown up because people feel better than they think, so they go harder than they think they should and that's the end of that race. Have you done that before, Mary? Um, yes. 
cut to when Mary did it. But that's, that's essentially what I'm saying is you have to have the plan that we spoke about earlier, but there's no point in having a plan unless you can execute that plan. And that's tip number nine. And that's my race day lead up. That's my race day morning. That's my race day until I'm standing on the start line. And I usually can tell I have a good race when I've done all of those nine things. If, my, if something doesn't go right in a race, sometimes it's often because I've let one of those slip somehow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what though? Thinking of all of those things. What? It really makes me want to do a race. Yeah, me too. Well, we've got a few coming up. That's the yeah. exciting thing. Yeah. Time for us to enjoy the view. And if you liked the video, you're definitely going to like this video, which is how I took 20 minutes off my marathon PB in three months. Don't forget to consider subscribing.